In this video, I'll talk about the ensemble methods. In an ensemble method, a set of classifiers, also called base classifiers, are constructed from the training data. Then afterward, prediction is delivered by multiple classifiers. The general idea is that from the original training data, we sample and sample and sample with the replacement to create multiple datasets or subsets of original training data. And then on each subset, we build multiple, actually we build a classifier for each on each subset. So that way we build multiple classifiers on multiple uh, subsets. Once we have all the trained classifiers, we can combine the classifiers. Here, let's see why it works. Suppose that we have 25 base classifiers, and each classifier has an error rate of 35%. Assuming classifiers are independent, let's calculate the probability that the ensemble classifier makes a wrong decision. It would make the wrong decision when more than half of uh, the base classifiers make a wrong decision, meaning greater than or equal to 13 of them make the wrong decision. That is when the ensemble classifier makes the wrong decision too. So let's call I the number of making wrong decision. So the probability of making wrong decision i times and making right decision the rest of times is this product and there are 25 um, base classifiers in which i of them make a uh, wrong decision so then we have the combination selecting i from 25 and i can be from 13 to 25 that's the way we sum the probabilities for equal to or greater than 13 base classifiers that make a wrong decision so the result of this is about six percent which is much much smaller than 35%. We will talk about the two main methods, including backing and boosting. But also, there is also another called voting classifier or regression, in which the final decision is given by simple voting, or by voting and factoring by the reliability of each classifier. Now, let's talk about backing. In this method, we sample with replacement from the original dataset. We sample and sample again and again so that we have multiple subsets of the original data. And then we build a classifier on each subset of the original dataset. After this step, we have multiple trained classifiers. So then we can combine the resulting classifiers by, for example, majority voting, simply taking the majority of votes. So let's say if you have five classifiers and three of them say this example is classified as one and two of them say this example is classified as zero, then you take the majority of votes, which is one, and give it to uh, the example. This method greatly reduces the variance when compared to a single uh, base classifier and is very helpful in uh, preventing overfitting. Let's, let's look at the uh, probability that an instance is selected at least once in n times the instance or randomly selected from the Gini set. Here, uh, notice that the size of each uh, subset is the same as the original dataset, which is n. 
So when we randomly pick um, an instance from the original data set, the probability of uh, being selected for each instance is 1 divided by n. And the probability of not being selected is 1 minus 1 divided by n. We pick n times, so the probability of not being selected n times is 1 minus 1 divided by n to the n. So then eventually we have uh, 1 minus 1 minus 1 divided by n to the n as the probability an instance is selected at least once. When n is large, then what is the limit of this probability? We can prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus 1 divided by n to the n is actually 1 divided by e. So eventually, the probability an instance being selected at least once is about 63.2%. So then we can say, on average, a bootstrap sam sample or um, a subset contains approximately 63% uh, unique instances from the original training dataset. Next, we talked about another method called boosting. Boosting is an iterative procedure to adapt adaptively change the distribution of training data by changing the width given to the training examples, allowing the previously misclassified records to receive more focus. The algorithm includes multiple iterative calls to the base learners. The algorithm AdaBoost proceeds in a number of rounds. In each round, it creates um, a weak learner. In a thesis round, the width assigned to the uh, training sample i is denoted as wit. i here is for example i and t here is for the teeth round. The width is uh, the measure of the importance of correctly classifying example i on the current round. At the beginning of the algorithms, all the widths are set equally. But then on each round, the width of incorrectly classified examples are increased so that examples that are difficult to predict get higher width. This forces the base learner to focus attention on them. Let's look at the algorithm. Given a data set with n examples, the width or initialize with um, the value of 1 divided by n. And n here is the size of the training set. Now we run this for t rounds, capital T rounds. And uh, for each iteration, we use a lowercase t to indicate the t round. First, we train a weak learner, ht by minimizing the error rate. In the error rate, only the misclassified examples contribute to the error. And the contribution is also weighted by how difficult it is to predict the example. The importance of a classifier alpha t is a function of the error. The higher the error rate, the lower the importance. And then next, we run the updates for all the examples. More exactly, for all the weights of the examples. So here, um, for examples from 1 to n, and we use the uh, variable i for the i example. The width for the i example to be used by the weak learner is a next round t plus 1 is updated by the current value of it in the current round wit 
times a factor and this factor actually is a function of uh, classifier importance it is e to the alpha t if the classifier misclassifies the example so here if the example is wrongly classified then the weight is getting higher and if it is correctly classified then the width for the next route would be smaller. Continue that way, finishing um, all the routes, we have T um, chain classifiers. So then, given um, a test example X, we can uh, predict the result, the class of the example.